Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm free of this. All right, so you guys are using your textbook because it's got graphics in it that you need. So everybody should be open to page 100. Okay, go ahead and turn back to that first problem, please. Let's all be on the same problem together. All right, this I think is probably pretty easy for you guys, but um, let's do it anyways. All right, the right here is one inch long. A pencil is eight inches long. Find the ratio of the length of the pencil to the length of the eraser. All right, what's the answer? Ashley, eight to one, great job. Inches? Nope, correct, yeah, you're right to say no. Great, eight to one, that's, that's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Figure A and B are made up of identical squares, and this is, again, is on page 100. So you've got a picture that looks like this, and then that's figure A. And then you've got figure B, you've got two squares across the top and three squares across the bottom. So the area of figure B or figure A is what the area of figure B. Um, so let's see, let's actually not, let's answer this next one first. Let's do the ratio first. The ratio of A to B. What is the ratio of A to B, Ray? Good job, two to five. And then remember the word fraction that I gave you guys? I gave, I've given you a couple now. We did change over original in last unit. And in this unit we did is, as, and are over of. Do you guys remember? And I had you write that down. Okay, so we wanna know, the, so figure A is is, figure B is of. Okay, so A goes on top. All right, so what's my fraction for the area of figure A is blank, the area of figure B? Mike way? Two fifths, yes, great job. Okay, so that, that word fraction really makes things a lot easier. Over here. Over here. All right. All right, next step, we've got a barrel with 25 gallons of water. A fish tank has 20 gallons of water. Wait, I have a lot of this today, I feel like. There's <laughs> a lot of stuff on my podium. Um, Find the amount of water in the barrel to the amount of water in the fish tank. So we want barrel to fish tank. Okay, this was another pretty easy one. Um, Aldo, what's the answer on that one? Okay, now if I, if I want a ratio, I don't wanna say 20, 20 fifths, okay? That's a fraction. Um, but let's take a look again. It says a barrel has 25 gallons of water. A fish tank has 20 gallons of water. We want the amount of water in the barrel to the amount of water in the fish tank. That's why I like to set up these word ratios right here so that then I can go fill in the units. So how many units does the barrel have, Alda? Okay, and how about the fish tank? Great, now help me simplify. Five to four, great job. Okay, how are we doing so far, guys? Give me a thermometer. Okay, Tyler, give me your thermometer. To the side. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, let's all make sure we're following along in our notes, please. <laughs> Helen saved $60 in six months. Fred saved $72 within the same period of time. Find the ratio of Helen's savings to Fred's savings. All right, Mateo. Um, so it's three to six. Three to six, is it? Okay, five let's see. What is it? Five, five to six. Okay, why did you change your mind? Because it's five and one. Well, I think you set your ratio up backwards. So if you start again, start with these, with the letters, okay? Helen saved $60 in six months and Fred saved $72 within the same month. Okay, so I like it. And then it says find the ratio of Helen's savings to Fred's savings. I always like to put in those initials first or those letters to help me fill in the units later. All right, so you gave me the correct ratio after. What did you end up dividing by? 12? Yeah. Okay, divided by 12. And then you told me five to, to six. Great job. Yeah, you did yeah. five. That's back. Yeah, that's backwards. All right, okay, good. So 
the reading on thermometer A is blank that time that of the reading on thermometer B. Find the ratio of the reading on thermometer A to the reading on thermometer B. Let's start with the ratio first, okay? It's easier. So we want A to B. All right, looking on page 101, what is what is the reading on thermometer A, Annie? 70 to 105, great job. Uh, and when you simplify that, when you simplify that, um, we could maybe divide by five first. Okay, if we divide by five, what are we gonna get 14 to, to 21? No, not 21st, because we're not, these aren't fractions right now. Okay, so I divided by five. I got 14 to 21. Is that simplified? No. All right, what can I do, Nora? Nice job, divide them both by seven, I like it. So two to three, and that's my, gonna be my final answer. Good. All right, let's do some tomatoes and potatoes. <laughs> All right, tomatoes and potatoes. Okay. All right, yeah, let's, um, so eventually, so we want to find the ratio of the weight of tomatoes to the weight of potatoes, yeah. um, but we've got fractions of kilograms over there on our scales, don't we? So can anybody tell me how many kilograms the tomatoes weigh? How many kilograms do the tomatoes weigh? If you look on page 101, it's kind of hard, but the, the, um, the dial on the scale is kind of going backwards because it's, it's going, um, is that counterclockwise? No, that's clockwise. It's going clockwise. Um, and they're moving by one-tenth of a kilogram. So, how much do the tomatoes weigh, Alex? How much do the potatoes weigh, Caleb? Okay, 1.4. All right, this is kind of an unfriendly ratio right here because we've got a decimal in the ratio. We, we can do this. This is okay. Like, this is nothing wrong with that. But A, we can simplify it. Um, and B, it's going to be a lot easier to to work with if we just convert this to grams. Okay, so remember that one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. Okay, so write that down on the slide. So that means I need to move the decimal three places to the right if I wanna convert, okay? So if I have 0 0.7 kilograms, I'm gonna add a couple zeros, I have one, two, three, 700 grams, all right? How about 1.4 kilograms? How many grams does that equal? Finn? Good job, 1,400 grams. Okay, so let's use whole numbers. We've got 700 to 1,400. Now it's really easy to tell what my simplified ratio is. What's my simplified ratio here? Oh, we can do one to two, one to two. 700 is half of 1400. So remember, it, um, is as are tomatoes as over, uh, this is one, this one's a hard, <laughs> this is actually a hard one because the of's not in there. But the tomatoes weigh blank as much as the potatoes. Annie, one half as much, good. My koi. What, what, what do you mean? We just did when we said the tomatoes weigh, weigh half as much as the potatoes. All right, let's do another one. Keep cranking them out. This is another, okay. So Trent ran one half as, oops, there it is. Trent ran one and one half times as far as his sister. What is the ratio of the distance Trent ran to the distance his sister ran. Okay, actually, let's put this down here. And let's just set this up here. Trent ran. All right, now, what is one, one half as an improper fraction, you guys? Three halves, right? Three halves, okay. So we've been working with, you know, 
changing ratios to fractions and fractions to ratios. How many units did Trent run? And how many units did his sister run? Elijah? Three to two. That's exactly right. Great job. Okay, so if we look back up here, Trent ran one and a half times as far as his sister. We could write it like this, one and a half to one, right? But that's not, that's a fraction within a ratio and, and that, that makes it harder. So it's just easier to convert that fraction up here to an improper fraction or over here. Equals three over two. And then we know that three is Trent and the two is his sister and my ratio is three to two. Does that kind of make, does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. So Alex, um, where's like the, where does it stop making sense? When I take the one and a half and I say it's also Trent's sister. It's a little bit, with this word problem, it's hard because it says, it's you don't have the of in there, do you? You don't have the word of, right? But um, we could also say Trent ran one and a half times as, well, we couldn't say of his sister, that'd be really weird, but one and a half times as far as his sister. So here's a, here are another couple ways to illustrate it. Um, here's Trent, here's sister, right? We could do a bar model if Trent ran um, we wouldn't bar model one and a half, would we? If Trent ran three units, his sister had to run two units, right? Because he ran one and a half times as far. We we could, I mean, we could do, what would we bar model that? Trent, if we did it like this, Trent's sister has one unit, Trent would have one unit plus a half unit, um, but we don't really like to do that. We like to bar model in whole units, right? So then we change it, we change it to that improper fraction. It's kind of a lot easier to see. When you see it like this, does it make a little bit more sense? Yeah. Okay, Gabby. Go for it. Okay, so Trent's Ran one and a half times less. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that can work too. <laughs> okay, let's move on, you guys. Okay, a storybook costs two sevenths as much as a storybook and a dictionary together. What is the cost of the dictionary to the cost of the storybook? This one's a little bit harder. Did anybody do this one? Did you? Well, I did. Okay. Um, Annie, what'd you, what'd you get? We want the ratio of the cost of the dictionary. No, that's incorrect. We want the cost of the dictionary to the cost of the storybook. I'm going to call that D. What'd you get, Isaac Ring? No. This Here's why it's complicated, because you're given... What the information you're given here is the storybook costs two sevenths as much as a storybook and a dictionary together. So total, they have seven units. Maddie, not quite. Mateo, um, two sevenths to one. <laughs> Let's bar model it, you guys. Okay, we've got a, a book, and we've got what'd you say? It's five to two. Nice job. We've got a book, and we've got a dictionary. All right, we know that the storybook costs two, um, two sevenths as much as both the book and the dictionary together. So together they need to have seven units, all right? So that means the dictionary has how many units, you guys? Five, exactly. No, 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 one, two, three, four, five, okay. So the dictionary has five units, so that means that the, dic the, the ratio of the dictionary to the book is five to two. Okay. All right, um, you have an exit ticket there. So why don't you guys go ahead and um, do that really quickly. Don't tear them off. We'll just go through them really quick in just a minute.
Oh, that's funny. Oh, your notes are off. I get it. Okay. All right. We don't need to have a conversation about it. Just do the problems. There you go. Thank you. Be careful on that last one, you guys. Oh, actually, be careful on the last three. Just kidding. Yes, the last three involve converting. All right, what's the first one? 15 centimeters to 25 centimeters. Three to five. 40 kilograms to 16 kilograms. Okay. 10 to $75. All right. 25 cents to $1. Great, good job. Let's let's back up for just a second. So you should have converted that one dollar to one hundred cents. You would have had twenty five to one hundred, which is one to four. How about nine inches to one foot, Mateo? Three to four. Great. So you started by converting the one foot to inches. Good job. And then you simplified three to four. Five hundred milliliters to one point five liters. Start with the unsimplified version, guys. Ray. It's not one to five, no, um, Zoe, one to three. So you should have converted that 1.5 liters to 1500 milliliters and you would have gotten one to three. Okay, awesome, nice job, everybody. Okay, just leave them on, no, just, yeah, Gabby, you can do that later, thank you. All right, I've got a little, um, some extra tutorials for you guys to do. to kind of practice the, when you have the types of problems that are like, there are blank times as many. That's what we're gonna practice right now, okay? It's not homework, it's for yours. I want you to write at the top of this, not homework, because <laughs> I'm actually educating the team with the homework. One, if we get to the end, if we have some extra, then move one. Okay, so what are you writing at the top of that? Okay, good. 